Canadian diamonds are highly sought after on a global scale. This is because in Canada, it is guaranteed that there was no bloodshed over the mining of the diamonds, but also because of the arrangement of atoms within the diamonds, which allow for a better flow of light through the diamond. Mining also accounts for a large part of our national and global economy. There are four major diamond mines in Canada, Snap Lake, Kennedy Lake, Ekati, and Dyavik. All of them are located in a cluster just a couple hundred kilometers north of Yellowknife. The Dyavik mine started construction in 2001, and diamonds were being processed by 2003. Prior to its construction, an agreement had to be signed between five indigenous groups, the Lutzoke Dene, the Yellowknives Dene, the Tleko government, the Katikmea Inuits Association, and the North Slave Métis Alliance. $1.3 billion was spent building the mine between 2001 and 2003. Infrastructure built with this money includes a kimberlite ore and diamond recovery processing plant, offices and housing for several hundred workers and staff, utilities, fuel and explosive storage, an airstrip, a containment area for contaminated kimberlite, a maintenance shop, and much more. Lots of this infrastructure was built on Lac de Gras. According to the Bedford Mining Alert, as well as the Mining Watch Canada, one of the biggest problems that faces mining companies in Canada is acid mining drainage, or AMD for short. And once AMD has started, it can cost millions of dollars to fix and persist annually, sometimes for several hundreds of years. These mines take up a huge amount of space and can greatly impact the land around it. The effect of these mines are felt even hundreds of kilometers away through certain chained ecosystems. The AMD in water can poison a water supply, directly affecting any aquatic inhabitant in the surrounding area, as well as humans that rely on the water and the general area for a reliable source of clean water. On top of this, two keystone mammals are affected by this. The Bathurst caribou herd, as well as the barren ground grizzly bear. This construction made the local grizzly population in the area become vulnerable. A tragedy of the commons risks occurring when diamonds are taken out of the ground at sites like Dyvik, and the environment around it pays the price for the intrusive drillings without the knowledge of the mining company. This can already be seen in local caribou and grizzly populations, which are very important for the sustainability of the Arctic and subarctic ecosystems. The Dyvik mine is owned 60% by the Rio Tinto Group based in Australia and 40% by the Dominion Diamond Corporation based in Belgium. Rio Tinto estimated in 2001 that the diamond mine would last until 2022 and is therefore a rival resource in the North Slave region. So how did Dyvik manage to get a place to mine in the center of such a meaningful place, especially for the surrounding indigenous communities? As was previously mentioned, an agreement was ratified between five separate communities on an individual basis. Part of the agreement involved providing training, employment, and business opportunities for the local Indigenous group. Of the 997 employed people, 485 lived in the Northwest Territories, or the Katikmayot region of Nunavut. Another way that the Dyavik made an effort to create employment as well as more sustainable mining site was the construction of a wind farm that is functional down to negative 40 degrees Celsius. This reduces their greenhouse gas emissions by about 12,000 tons, which accounts for 6% reduction. The remaining 94% is primarily from diesel. The mine's closure this year in 2022 is going to be hard because you can't just get up and leave a bunch of toxic waste behind. The current idea is to fill up the mines with excess kimberlite and cap with muromixis from the excess kimberlite, which is pretty much just clean water byproduct of the processed kimberlite that has a different chemical composition than the rest of Lac de Gras, and therefore won't mix with the other lake water. After this, the dikes would be breached and the lake water would cover the remaining empty space within Dyavik. The top 40 meters of the water is expected to be stable enough to support local freshwater life and terrestrial life, but anything less than 40 meters in the lake can't be spoken for. Dyavik resources are slowly depleting and the employment demand is also lowering. 
Soon they will have to go and find a new site to mine diamonds, but is it worth it? It is important to look at the socioeconomic side of the debate, where employment in the north is much needed in certain locations, and how these diamonds would greatly aid in Canada's economy. On the environmental side of things, however, we have to consider the disrupted ecosystems as well as the overall addition of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. We are at the point where every action done against the environment has tremendous impact that are felt globally, and we have to really consider if it is worth it to continue mining in this method.